Hello, this is yet another special edition of the Fat Boy Show here on your number one station, RX Radio. And in this exclusive special, once again, we're going to be talking to important movers and shakers out there. Yes, yet another powerful CEO joins us here on the Fat Boy Show, this time to talk to us about ICT. Joining us on the Fat Boy Show today is Gideon Kurunungi, who is the CEO of the ICT Association of Uganda. Hello, Gideon, and welcome to the Fat Boy Show. Um, say hello, fat boy. Happy to be here. <laughs> so good yeah. to see you. Yeah. Now I have seen you making so many waves. Uh, yeah. There, you know, in the tec- technical sphere, the IT sphere. Yeah. Can you tell us what's going on with uh, ICT at the moment in Uganda, and tell us what role you specifically play? So, uh, firstly, my name is Gideon. Thank you for introducing me. I'm happy to be here. Um, and greetings to our listeners out there and watchers now, guys watching us out there, yeah. all the gurus. <laughs> yeah, and we are also on RX Radio, a radio that is the only uh, full-time online radio, That's I right. must insist. And so that defines where IT is at. Um, mm. We are at a very um, space where innovation has started to erode in our market. Mm-hmm. Innovation has eroded. And as the ICT Association of Uganda, we have decided to um, decide to engage all IT people out there mm-hmm. to let them know we should be concerned. So and also organization leaders too need to be concerned because it, innovation has started to erode in our culture. And so when you say uh, it is eroding, do you mean it is eroding some of the older ways of doing things? And so now uh, companies, institutions, organizations, and even individuals now have to embrace these new technologies that are coming in and changing the way we communicate, share information, and really carry out our daily lives. Um, We've started the conversation on a real note, and a good one really, Mm -hmm. Uh, than first talking about what is the situation of Uganda, what are you, who are you, Gideon, (laughs) I like how we've gone, and really let's let's knock it on. Okay. The the fact is that a few radios have even decided to be bold like you, Mm -hmm. to go fully online, yet you declared this three years ago. Mm -hmm. So why is that more not tending to this way? Rock in lockdown, uh, we saw a, ch- a change and a shift to people going uh, online and they went E. But now many have said going slack again mm. to start bring the rudimental and conventional ways of doing business. Mm. Um, we have what we call digital transformation. We have what we call uh, innovation. Uh, in digital transformation, we look at can companies transform and change. And we thank lockdown for creating that um, it was a blessing in disguise. People realized the power of technology. True. People started looking at Fat Boy not as an outlier. Mm-hmm. They think actually this is a brilliant, this is a genius move. But um, organizations too have prioritized profit mm-hmm. over innovating. Mm. And adaptation has always been what everyone does. So we are seeing organization leaders less bold. Um, yet as an association we have cheap technologies that they can take on so we feel the fear by organization leaders to be transformed to be aware in their mindsets too so that they can adopt this this change because um, innovation is why we exist as an association and maintaining those standards and protecting the market making sure that we keep improving and we be uh, a center of innovation in Africa all right yeah yeah Well, let's talk about the ICT Association of Uganda for a minute, the institution of which you are the CEO. Uh, And so uh, my understanding is that uh, the ICT Association was formed by private individuals from Uganda with the vision of providing professional guidance to individuals and organizations in the private sector, as well as providing advisory services to government on policy-based issues. The ICT Association of Uganda, or in short, ICTAO. Do you use that acronym? (laughs) Yeah, we use it a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, um, so you also happen to have a fireside chat, which is which is scheduled for the twentieth, well, uh, of this month. We're going to talk about that uh, a little bit later. But first, just going back to what your vision is, which is to provide professional guidance to individuals and organizations in the private sector, uh, as well as uh, providing advisory services to government and policy-based issues. Yeah. So what is it? What is the kind of uh, professional guidance that you seek to impart upon uh, people in the private sector? Yeah, the professional guidance is through uh, representation mm-hmm. and standards that we hope to be kept and mm-hmm. to be met because we want to increase the standards, want to redefine the sector. 
So this is done through a dynamic platform that we offer all our members. Mm-hmm. First of all, we comprise of ICT executives, mm-hmm. with organization leaders, mm-hmm. policy makers, and researchers who are in academia. Okay. Uh, all these co- combined with the consultants to make sure that they exchange ideas, uh, innovation, innovative practices, and also uh, there could be new strategies that they want to bring on board mm. so we review them and work with them to make sure that they applied in in the sec- in the all sectors but with the policy makers we advise government on policy now this is the shocker mm-hmm. um government seems to have aligned their URA portals and URSB portals and they're going to have open data in by in two years time mm. they're going to have open data we still have registration forms, we still have radios and various channels that have decided to stay analog. None want to go digital. Government has made a huge a huge declaration like the one you made years ago, sir. Went totally E. Mm. What about our organizations? Are we also going to, how are we going to consume that open data? That's too much wealth. So, um, I guess the question would be how you would integrate all that information. So, if, for example, you know, URA have have their IFRA system, which, yes. you know, as a businessman, I, of course, have to interact with. And yeah. I do find it to be fairly robust yeah. and fairly easy to use. So, yeah. kudos to government for that. Uh, also, now, I know you can apply for driving permits uh, yes. online, yeah, yeah. Uh, permit renewal, uh, NSSF. I applied for my uh, midterm benefit online also. Uh, and so uh, there's so many ways in which, uh, at least in the public sector, the government is doing a good job in making many of their services available to the public. I guess my question is, is the, how that integrates with what the private sector is doing? Are you seeing a strong synergy there or is there still a huge gap between what the government is doing and what the private sector is doing? The, 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 there's a very huge gap. And the private sector, okay, in money, in, you see, as a CEO, one of the things you have to do is number one, go back, Gideon, you're a tech person, you've been too much in tech, go back and start being an organization, a management uh, scientist. Mm -hmm. Uh, Manage the organization strategy, look at the organization strategy and maybe redraft it, make sure that it's, it, it, it really, you can bring it into the short-term objectives and make sure that the short-term goals, long-term goals, and make sure that uh, you can make the board see where you're going and as fast as possible, bounce off their energy and have uh, good results as early as possible. And also while representing the members' needs as soon as possible, listening to everyone, co- conducting consultative meetings. Now, when you look at every organization, it has a business strategy, um, the general business strategy, to define why do why do organizations have strategies is simply to review to give direction and to deal with how they will operate how they price pricing strategies human resource strategy how are we going to manage our humans that are coming to our organization mm-hmm. so all that one thing is missing is a digital transformation strategy no organization has recorded that with ICT session apart from our members who we are telling you must have a digital transformation strategy now, they have eliminated an IT executive out of a boardroom. When you, when you have marketing teams, administrators in the boardroom, IT executives are not in the They're boardroom. They're not there. That's true. They're so then there, there. Is, then there is no innovation that They're, you're going to account for. They're essentially relegated to the role of support staff, as you would a cleaner or someone like that. You know, just someone who is around to fix things. Instead of someone who is integri- integral to the management uh, process and decision making of an organization that's very interesting and so you you feel that that is where ICTAO uh, feels it needs to really emphasize the importance of involving ICT uh, professionals even at a board level managerial level firstly it's going to start with the IT executives out there waking up and knowing that it concerns them if innovation is starting to erode in our market and if it's eroding they need to also understand that ICT Uganda wants to repackage them to be boardroom ready then also we are also engaging organization leaders to understand us too. So we are also onboarding them to have consultative meetings with them, understand that innovation is starting to erode in our market. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about the constitution of uh, ICTAO. Um, how is it that it has come together? Is this simply a voluntary association of private actors yeah. uh, who decided to come together to create a platform where these ideas can be exchanged? Is this a statutory institution? How did it come into being? Yeah, it's a non-for-profit organization that's very pivotal that came together by uh, uh, Albert Muchunguzi, 
and uh, Elizabeth Ntege, Badron Ntege, there are a couple of players that are part of the founders, initial founders, very brilliant minds. Uh, since 2014, they came together, they incorporated in 2017 uh, for non-for-profit reasons. But you see, we carry on projects that are, we carry out projects that are outside this country, working with development partners who may want to uh, support innovators here. Okay. And also, we work with the government, advise them on policy while looking at advocating for our members. Mm -hmm. But also we, we check government agencies too, like QRA and others, and also check the Ministry of ICT. Sometimes you may have a digital transformation roadmap. Mm -hmm. So we want to check you, how far are you? So we went to check with the government, we saw the digital transformation roadmap is going well. Now where is the private sector is, yet we advise them on policies that they are doing, working with UCC a lot. That's why I think a lot of work is being done by UCC. The Data Protection Office is doing a great job by NITAU. But now again, the private sector has started to doze. So we want to have the private sector to know the power of having an IT person in the boardroom. But also we are going to equip an IT person to be boardroom ready. Yes, they can stay technical, but they need to... Uh, we, can ha we have very practical things working on with Macquarie University institutions. We have research that's available that these organizations can consume free data that we have, free source, open source tools that we have that they can take on, mm -hmm. at least to transform some things, remove the paper from them. Mm -hmm. So it takes a bold decision like the one you made. Sorry again. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> For an organization and all organizations, CEOs coming together and say, we're chasing paper out of the organization. We're going paperless. Well, you know, you sound, like how very, you did it. You, you sound very passionate about this, and I think uh, it's it'll be hard to miss uh, for anyone that's listening or watching. Um, tell us about your experience and how you came to this realization that there is a need to get uh, IT professionals more involved. Maybe you can shed some light on your background. My understanding is that you obviously come from a technical background. You've worked with some of the largest telecoms. You've also done uh, a lot of things to do with the data. Uh, and d d just give us a little bit of your background and your experience in tech, in management, and how it is that you came to join ICTAO and then become its CEO. I believe I'm the one of the first people who built the first e-commerce site in Uganda, but I may not declare, and Tell I us. may not say where, for data protection rights <laughs> and non-confidential rights. But uh -huh. the, I built one of the first e-commerce sites in Uganda. That's before Jumia came. It was around 2016, 2017. Jumia had said scratching grounds. But the indigenous supermarkets, I've, been, I've worked with supermarkets a lot. I worked with MTN Ali. Um, I interned from there. I did my first few work from there in the cybersecurity department, but didn't become official because I felt I could do it better in the private sector. I ran quickly, started... Um, I was very passionate about cybersecurity. That is when I was at UCU. I liked, I liked to hack. So it made me enjoy. You, wait, wait, wait. Did you yeah. say you liked to hack? Yes, that's black hat hacking, actually. <laughs> so and it's so funny because I know a lot of the top experts in uh, data security, yeah. you know, have a background in 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 that, in that kind of. I've heard stories, and I don't know if this is just Hollywood, but yeah. sometimes they recruit people who have been engaging in some of those hacking activities because they know better than anyone else what the vulnerabilities of you know data systems are and so they would be best qualified to advise on how best to protect uh, a, a system uh, would that would that be you admitting to <laughs> true like like true <laughs> to, like to having a when i was being that? interviewed at mtn the interview was to hack their website yeah, what? and your graduate yes wait, 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 wait. so i have your job interview at mtn they said Here's our website, hack it. Yes, that's how you do it. So you have to show them, we have something called Kali Linux, an operating suite for hackers. Okay. Uh, I was in the very dark web community and really it was a very interesting life I had. But it taught me to live, the, to understand, be, be, being, being beyond the software developer and you go now deep into bringing systems down and also assessing the, the, how strong they are. Mm -hmm. And we're having a lot of cybersecurity threats that are happening and because as we transform digitally, cybersecurity is going to be a huge challenge. But as it becomes a huge challenge, organization leaders need to know that an association is there to help them consistently adapt and change. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yes, I've been, I've worked with telecoms. So wait, were you successful them to make sense. In, in hacking the site? Uh, that would be <laughs> for another day, but I was, I was that by Huawei, who which was like one of the okay. lead interviewers in that project. Wow. So, uh, but I, I didn't get admitted immediately. All right. So I said, no, I refused because of the amount which was being given to me. I said, no, I won't stay. Okay. Yeah, I made a bold decision, went to the private sector to work. 
and it really offended some people who had given me the job but I told them yeah like, your family must have been furious family I mean, how do, how do you pass even the people at, at Huawei MTA? who believed in me yeah because Huawei was leading the recruitment there they okay. said this kid will do but the challenge has always been the fact that we go to work in these companies and we end up not doing anything we end up moving the casa and you feel like I'm not doing anything practical here my brain is not being utilized mm. so the private sector has really done me well I was immediately scouted by a great uh, person called Chris Cherere management consultant billionaire big oligarch called me around uh, started running one of his outsourcing firms which had closed in 2011 opened it up in 2017 uh, planned with companies abroad uh, to reignite it but it had closed because of a credit crunch in Europe Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but it was doing very good work since 2004. So, did them we did, did with them a lot of work and currently I'm I've been elevated to become a director. Wow. So, it, yes, we done a lot of work in behalf of impact and that's how I realized the fact that IT people are in silos. Silos. Yes, we are alone. We want to work alone. I'm running Your a company. <laughs> yes, we're running a company. I'm running alone. I'm doing a website. I'm working alone. Okay. I don't know any other person who can attach a payment system to it or a, a code to it so that maybe we make some money through blockchain. No one wants to care. So IT people are working alone. We are working in silos, organizations too. Mm-hmm. And it's because they as, and and we are limiting our potential. That is when I realized that I need to work with an association to and lay down my mantle lay down my ego my uh, my love to be in t-shirts let me love to be a biker mm-hmm. i had to put all those things down to say let me serve the association uh, we serve voluntarily i must declare i'm serving voluntarily to the association um, i run i have my own marketing agency When you say voluntarily yes. does that mean you don't get a salary to be the ceo currently i declared in the last agm that i want to serve voluntarily because i must be assessed uh, why should you earn salary recently we had a For football your time match time and expertise no, no, no. yes on. time and expertise is equal to results we had a match recently so i met my obs uh-huh. uh, i went to a school called chapa league single school so yeah, yeah. so they had something called chapa league so they were playing football so my team didn't score the goal in half time So that day they elected me to be their manager. Maybe they were going to make me manager long term, who knows. <laughs> so I just moved around with them. I'm not a football guy, I'm a basketball guy, sorry. Yeah. So I engaged them and they said, "Hmm. Gideon, we manager, we want water at half time." And one of the boys replied them and said, "Do you want water? What have you done on the pitch? <laughs> we want goals. I must deliver so, goals to the association. Big right. dogs first." So so you're determined to show the members what it is you can accomplish first for the We already have. I've already have in my last three months in the tenure really now I have. They have already seen we having a like uh, we have onboarded more members that have come on the association but also we ha- we are pivoting the entire strategy of the organization mm-hmm. and uh, we have already engaged the partners MOUs are already existing I've already reignited them. I'm having new MOUs coming up with Uganda Investment Authority, Uganda Commissions Commission, I'm with Nita you everything I'm reigniting it. I'm having support from all sectors and I want to thank people on Mr. Onen, people are kind out there. People want this sector to grow. People people know these challenges. So I thought that I was fulfilling my own conviction, but I found out that people are willing to help out. Like really what you've done for us, hosting us here and putting all this equipment here to get information out there. Really, it's not, it's beyond what we may even say thank you for. Yeah. Wow, happy to be a part of it because yeah. uh, I do see myself as a part of this uh, tech wave uh, here in Uganda because as you mentioned, yeah, uh, online uh, radio even as we started it was something that raised a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh you know, especially like pe- people in the business community weren't really sure if it's a thing that could even work. Uh so for me, I had the burden of proof of concept even doing that first before even trying to convince them that you know I do good shows they wanted to know will people access it will people listen to it and then i just pointed them to statistics that show from ucc the penetration of smartphones uh, proliferation of internet access which is increasing year by year 1.5 new users million users every year uh, and so and media consumption also is increasingly happening uh, in the digital uh, realm uh, and so really that's the trajectory things are going uh, in and and to, to challenge you is that ICT people who are 2 million out there should be thumping up companies that are taking stock decisions like yours 
yeah. they should be saying we are team rx radio i would think uh, uh, maybe it's good to, that to you create are a wave to create a movement thank you which is why i'm happy you're here as yeah. the ceo of iktal perhaps yeah. you can yeah. add your voice to the chorus of voices uh in the tech sphere who may want more support because it's, it's it's not a very uh it's quite a daunting thing to enter into this space and to try to break new ground and new boundaries yeah. um a lot of people are intimidated by it and so they don't even try see so um if i think there was a greater call for support to be shown for those who are venturing in this space i think more people would come on board and uh, more people would feel confident to make this a serious vocation a serious business what do you think about that yeah like the beach is not yes we shall do that but as an association is what what is the longing fruits here is we all our members need to uh to 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 be agents of change in the community to tell people no uh, i only listen to online radio that's all i only shop online that's all to create a new demand because the service industry is that you have to first create demand then you supply i've been in it for a long time you can even ask how many companies have websites in Uganda you'll be shocked but if we say that actually you can have an online website you can have a website and you integrate with rx radio and it plays live on those re- on those websites it officials will be say okay i have a company website i can put rx radio there so that they can even increase their tra- traction but also entertain the people who view their websites and e-commerce sites these are innovative things that they need to do so that we create a new movement that will create radios that are online and we create a new change a new wave because the analog people will keep controlling this market unless we we remove the ladder and we can do it because we are 2 million strong all right so what i'm hearing from you is that it, it is for us the individuals in that sector to be the ones to lead the way uh, we are 2 million not, strong and not to wait for others uh, to come in and and help we enable the sector and we can create the change because we are the ones who hold the nodes who have the plugs mm. The IT people are underappreciated out there. They're underappreciated, they're undervalued, they are misinterpreted. They are never in the boardroom. It's only marketing teams and they 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 are even get thank you notes at the end of the year. They even get checks. But IT people are looked at as we can easily replace you. You know nothing you're Do IT guys value. even get bonuses? I mean, come on. Never. Is, the server didn't crash this year. Where's my bonus? Thank you. Right? Like, or something like that. Uh, uh, we were my company was being outsourced by a certain company X out there and we we disagreed on budgets and really what up to now they do have an, a company to, some people to replace us mm-hmm. up to now and they are still surviving but they, are, they they have scaled down on some operations but still they have said we don't need can you imagine that's that it's that level because you've created automation too much and when you leave so, the automation will still run the systems so people take it, it guys for granted our brain power is not respected it's not appreciated and we we understand that so an it person is but as is there he needs to know we want to make him boardroom ready as an association and we want to represent them very well number one. number two, we as well want to start engaging people to look at how much are they paying them we want to talk about that but they need to come together but also as they come together let them listen to rx radio let them listen to on let them shop on on e-commerce supermarkets that say to go e let them let them be the the, the movers let them engage procurement teams and say maybe let's only shop online let's so that things such let's put a products online let us start creating that movement and it causes it's by looking at an e-commerce service provider and you plug in your products there and that's at no cost mm-hmm. but still it's trying to create a change do you think um social media has kind of made people lazy i'm seeing a lot of companies who their idea of engaging with digital platforms and putting making their businesses digital service to simply have a facebook page or a Twitter page or an Instagram page and they don't extend their digital footprint beyond that and, and in a way it can help especially i know lots of small businesses retailers people sell shoes people sell clothes phones what you know uh, people will see their adverts online and maybe buy a few things do you think that's sufficient or do you think uh, businesses need to go above and beyond simply uh, beyond simply maintaining a presence on social media in order to fully capture the benefits that this uh, platform offers social media has made people lazy i agree totally and uh, we have not the, the the interpretation of social media in Uganda and African countries and the okay let's call it internet it has been misinterpreted the interpretation of it the context actually of social media and and internet 
has been made for entertainment. So um, one of the services, the solutions one day I gave to an organization was to control their bandwidth and whatever people search. Oh, actually, when we do that as IT people, we are... Wait, within organizations? Yes, because see, cybersecurity is my background, so I know what to do. Wait, wait, because in a lot I of can offices, create, yeah, yeah. people you know, use office internet to do their own funny things. Instagram, she's on TikTok the whole day. Uh-huh. So you first say that the deliveries are very few. So when I did that for an organization, we were people frowned at us. But you could see this. First of all, I'm cutting the cost of bandwidth, cost of time wastage. We're a distracted generation. We are too online. We are too much looking at Twitter. But how much? How many papers are we reading? And also, yes, I love Chat GPT coming, but I'm also a researcher at Macquarie University. So I, I, I feel like these automation tools, if we don't use them right, innovation is going to erode. Because you can ask someone, how many books have you read this year? When we were single, maybe, why I'm single, maybe it could be that when I was back in the day, girls would read many novels. Ask her now how many novels you've read. But now they want to scroll through. So you find there is no intellectual conversation you're having. It's right. all too short. So the context of how we've understood social media is very wrong. And it comes with the IT executives being the ambassadors out there to make people not go online to... To, to, to watch a video on TikTok, but to go online, not even for entertainment, to go online to receive and learn something new. This will help us to train someone who is at the gate, who is at the reception, to learn a new skill, to learn how to bake through a YouTube channel. Then you find that people are starting more businesses. There we shall have created a new wave of innovators. Then the businesses which have received, refused to evolve and go online to show whatever they are doing and also to innovate their strategies to how to offer products to people faster, it will they, will they will feel the dent in their strategy. Then they will say, oh, we're a digital family strategy. They will also adapt. But if the young innovators out there, because we are a very young population, st- only look at innovation, we make the older population to seem that we are distracted and we don't know the, t- the true power we have. Mm-hmm. Let's really take use of these tools with the right context. So for me, I feel the context of how we understood social media and the power it has, we have, we are we are not using them to the right power it has. Instagram as well does not allow Instagram shops in Uganda. Facebook doesn't allow Facebook shops in Uganda. Um, Wait, is this because uh, it has been blocked by the government? Or? There is that, but also it's the context. Are, are ICT people coming together so that we raise this to, to Facebook or they want us to do it for them just and then they thank us and say, oh, they did it. But Facebook shops, Instagram shops can be open. We can plead. We as an ICT of Uganda because, yes, it's blocked, but we tell them, for us, we know our way. <laughs> Have this thing open. How many online sites don't support the Ugandan currency? Very many. Payments in dollars. Or Why is that all companies are going to Kenya, not Uganda? It's how we position ourselves. How many companies are getting funding in Uganda? Let's say startups. Very few. And the ones that are getting, are they being scalable? Okay, our ideas, the best they are in Africa, or they are being ignored by funders, or really we are not thinking. Mm. Guys in Nigeria, boys in, in boys, you know, boys in India, boys, boys, boys are doing stuff out there in outside, oh, yeah. af, outside Uganda. Oh yeah, we are landlocked. That's my only challenge. So the 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 understanding of all this, it comes to the executives' understanding. Really, we need to be digitally transformed quickly, and then companies too will adapt to use social media, right? Mm-hmm. Companies too will have startups internal. You find now Eric Sodi has another budding startup internal that's going to do this, but also we've already eyed a funder who wants to fund, maybe to train women on something. This will create a huge buzz in the sector. Now let's talk about that. I have seen uh, of late that uh, Iktao has been engaging in some outreach programs targeted at women. Yeah. I think you had a women in tech event. Uh, yeah. some weeks ago. Can you tell us about that and uh, how you are continuing to engage women? Do you think there is a need uh, to create awareness about the need for more women in the tech sector? When we go through our databases and engagements, we find few women. In Uganda, only two or one women owns a fintech. Okay. Oh. That's, that's very few. What about uh, women in working in the field generally? Of yes, but let's also look at women living being an admin in a tech firm, being a head of call center in a tech firm, and also owning a tech firm. What are the firm. stats on that? What do they look like? Only one woman owns a fintech in Uganda. Okay, for fintechs. Yes. But what about like a head of IT in Uganda? We have very many women who are in the IT space, but they have not transitioned to head departments. But we want the ones who are heading departments as also to own companies. So why do you tech. think there are so few? Is it a social, cultural issue? Is it women are just naturally not interested in those things? Is it an 
issue of aptitude some may I say think, i think we take responsibility for that as an association mm-hmm. and we started with like engagements we are doing we have warned all our uh, committees to know that and working groups that every panel we shall have three women three men or two men two women Oh really? Yeah. Like, so it's like a, an affirmative uh, action sort of thing. It starts with us as an association and leaders. Let's have women take the seat in everything. What would you say to those who, who would have concerns about uh, the need for meritocracy? Perhaps the best person should get the job and it shouldn't matter what uh, sex they are. I have seen ladies who are performing and they're being ignored because they feel that uh We, ladies are being ignored yet they are doing well out there because they feel this is a male sector mm-hmm. so as an association we, actually our chairperson is a woman and we have another lady on the board we also are putting on another lady on the board we are making sure that we be very inclusive but even beyond women we have also gone to the people with disabilities we make sure that some of them are also on our board on our on our panels on our forms of engagement mm-hmm. because the 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 vulnerable groups have been highly eliminated so even innovation has ignored them how sad so you find no one has innovated a wheelchair that can walk in our potholes or walk in or move in an, in other areas so you find everything that is being innovated is for the context of europe or to a context of what's trending because it's what we're putting in the eyes of people well in our case here in africa we have a infrastructure problem isn't yeah. it So unlike say in Europe or America or East Asia, Japan and so forth, we don't really have the infrastructure that would allow us to extend some of these advanced technologies to people with disabilities. But as an association we have we currently have a partnership with Microsoft. We have partnerships with every development partner that we can get. Tell us to get anyone here. The, the problem is that people don't know the power they have. Yesterday in our forum group someone asked that there was an issue the URA had and has been staying on their server for long. And I told them we can summon anyone in this country as an association. We can summon any agency. We already have meetings with Microsoft. Who is your a not to listen? And we have a relationship with them. It's not that we force them to listen. No, we engage them. We have dialogue with them. We document these things. So we don't want any person to feel that standards are not being met. I just want everyone to know that if you want to innovate in that sector, tell us an association that you as a company want to innovate, you already do wheelchairs, maybe or wooden chairs, but now you want to make them electronic. We know there is no tax on electronic cars now and electronic um, uh, self-charging vehicles in Uganda in Uganda. Is that true? Yeah, there is no tax. So if I want to import a Tesla, let's say. Yes, I think there's no tax currently. If I can check, they were waived. There are those things we, we as an association want to push towards and talk about like climate change, but we are now experiencing a big heat wave maybe it's a company that's manufacturing water that could be a solution or give <laughs> but but the point is what is the data even we're having in the heat wave no one is even measuring that data because our it people are all detached yeah. and because organizations give them that attitude so the point is that we want to create a platform for all vulnerable groups and make sure that the sector is very inclusive and if we put to the eyes of people that women are at the top women are being seen the association women will start getting that that spark that, that that hunger to say oh no 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 this action is also ours we so yeah, yeah. we want to be involved whether you're a human resource manager you can as well be part you can be nice it you can start an IT company mm-hmm. and we have us boys work for you so uh, tell us about uh, the fireside chat and what's going to be happening there this yes. is happening on the 20th of march uh, is it again going to be an open forum in which uh, people can come and uh, discuss issues with fellow ICT professionals Yeah so the the first I chat is going to be it's part of what we call cocktail and hashtag #lan lan is got like local area networking so mm-hmm. like how you connect computers together so so it's, it's cocktail and lan because once said it's networking <laughs> so these lans have been happening for many years and ah. this time we said let's celebrate it with a fireside chat because Ali Monza is leaving the country he's going to um He's the former city of MTN now he's going to South Sudan to be the CEO we have in James who is no longer the MD of Raxio uh, head managing managing country man, country manager I think of Raxio but now he's in the MD of uh, Rock Cloud we have seen people change positions but also we have seen something that is happening in the civil society NGOs how are they adopting technology the investors from Ghana investment that want to know what do they what are they asking What is shocking is that sometimes investors come here looking for brands that can do like do you have 2000 people who can do call center a company asks from Japan and Uganda says we don't 
How mm. sad. Very sad. Yet we have people we can employ. I'm telling you, I've been in those conversations with Minister of ICT with, with the Sampraja Code UJ Connect where we are working on something to match Ugandan companies with the ones in Europe and uh, Japan. But you know it's hard to match them. Because you, you can't match a company that is having over 22,000 staff to a company that has 253. It's not a match. So we have to ma- amalgamate the ones here and then combine like 40 mm-hmm. in match. Then sometimes you find our 40, the human resource records are wrong, the data is not right, show us all these people, they're not they're even ghost workers. So, so is it, uh, do you see it as the government's role to invest in that? Uh, in it's not the government here. I'm telling you, these people approach government. Government says no because they call me in a meeting. They call a social meeting. We go to look at our people. We shall. We go back and. No, say, but I mean, if it's an issue of say lack of it's, it's so not that skilled labor, it's not skilled, is it, is skilled it not, labor. Is not a problem of government. Just a minute. Yeah. Is, you do not think it's the role of the government to institute, let's say, curriculums or training facilities that no. would equip young people with. It the, already has done them. Have they done so sufficiently? Yes, we have innovation hubs across the country. In, if I, I don't talk about government because you're not a government entity, but I can preach it every day. The problem is that's the private sector. We are, there's business opportunity in Europe uh-huh. and we are limiting ourselves and we as a nation, we engage them. But when we listen to them, we find that they will, they will shame us mm. as a nation. The image of the nation, you'll go and under deliver, you'll sign the contracts, but these people, you'll not call these people in time. So Facebook takes the business to India. Facebook's call centers are now in India. Mm. We can as well do them here in Uganda. But the problem is that our market, if let's say you fail to have even an, a call center for customers who call your company. Well, I saw, wasn't, uh, I saw Uhuru Kenyatta having uh, meetings with uh, Tim Cook of Apple. And, yeah, uh, this e- even, uh, even the current president, Ruto, as well, he, he built on that vision. So sorry, not Uhuru. Uh, yeah, Ruto. Ruto. Yes. He has built on that vision. Yes. Starlink is already there. Uh, it's open exactly. India soon. So it, it's open India isn't soon. that a good example it's, of it's a head of state government. getting involved? It's in not those conversations I want to say that is for I want people. to say that the current revenue that is we are, we are not we are not tapping into the trillion dollar markets in business processing because we have limited ourselves as as IT and organization leaders and it is it is through that we come to have fireside chats to provoke our organization leaders so we invite all organization leaders um, that is heads of companies MD CEOs to come. Also, we invite IT leaders as well to come. Mm-hmm. And we want to bridge that gap between them and, and the others. And also to network with the person at Rocktail, the person at MT and the person at NSF. Let's let them meet each other. They're in IT. They are, they are, they are interested in IT. They want to invest in the same. Uh, to, to, to be in one ground. So, so who may go for this uh, fireside chat happening on the 20th of March? The whole... IT community is invited, both IT professionals and non-IT professionals, because we understand they're human resource managers that want to also understand IT people. Must they IT obtain people. tickets or something like this? Yes, they will obtain a ticket at entrance, really, and they can really come up on our social media platforms, on website, and really and get one. Where is the venue for this? Uh, it's at Sky's Hotel Naguru, um, at the poolside. Okay. Um, this, this contribution is for their snack and for their drinks, really, okay. that evening. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so this is really, truly a community of really true believers uh, who have a passion for this technology and how it can transform society. Uh, This is quite uh, amazing. I've learned so much uh, about uh, all these things by uh, speaking to you. Although I did want to know just a little bit more about you, Um, my understanding is that you are also personally involved in digital marketing. Is, is Is this something that you do personally? I have a digital marketing. So when I became director at Impact, before I became director, I started, when I left, okay, when they gave me the company to run, had that, it was closed in 2011 because of the credit crunch. It hadn't closed that much. Okay. But it had, you know, it was not a high operational. Um, the, the dire- I, I wanted to make the business to be relevant to the time. So I started with the digital marketing agency, did IT outsourcing, then did software development. So I created different revenue streams, different business units, and they have been really successful. Mm. So I have done a lot of digital marketing. I even went to do business. I went and became a business coach to understand how business leaders think so that I can easily translate their business interests on digital platforms. Well, you're also famous for having said that 70% of advertising budgets are wasted. Did True. you actually say that? They are wasted. I said that and I have been... Known. 70%? Yes, advertising budgets lot. of organizations are being wasted. That's a lot. And these are the big companies out there. Because we are not measuring, we're not looking at the data, we're not looking at the potentials that we can have. If Pepsi, Cola and 
other brands came there and said, no, actually, we can't measure that d- data that comes from radio. <laughs> let's talk to Rx Radio and those guys. And also, let's, let's, let's push for radios to go E and let's meet there with Fatijo. They will not have content. Mm. Okay, I'm not trying to say, okay, not that, not that they will not have content, but let's, how, let, let, the content, let them evolve. Let them also evolve in the content they are providing to make sure that they can have people produce content so we are boring them now they are wasting advertising but just now they are cutting them mm. and they are not seeing the value so they don't know how to measure this customer that they are targeting wow uh so uh, in your uh, with your uh, business uh this is what you do is you advise them on how we are leaders in artificial intelligence in this market um i have done a lot of research and i'm going to continue doing it in res- in artificial intelligence i've done a lot in behavior data prediction i predict prices I predict weather, and now I'm predicting malware. Malware, that is cybersecurity. I, I love it so much. So it's what I'm doing at University. Can you predict for us uh, how much we might have to start spending on our girlfriends in three years' time? Definitely. <laughs> like, that data, can, it's, it's possible, but you know, it's hard to measure it because... Come on, it's simple. It will only go up and up and up. <laughs> it's can very it ever true. go down? <laughs> It can go down <laughs> if, if we have more women in tech because women in tech, are, I think, are very tricky. Oh, that's I'm joking. True. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but yeah, like the truth is I love predictive data and yeah. we are losing a lot of data. We can't measure it because of the analog way of doing things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So what would be, uh, Gideon, your uh, you know, final uh, remarks to those who are listening and watching uh, about uh, what ICT Association of Uganda is doing? What is it you want the public to know about you? How is it they can offer assistance? How do you want people to get involved? The, the, fu- the fact is that as an association, we may not need assistance, but we want to know what we might be missing. Because if a company comes from Europe wanting to give business to Uganda mm. and we are not doing business with them because we have not organized ourselves as organization leaders really something is wrong we want to give you statistics want to give you information of how comp- what companies in europe want here and maybe you see whether you can have that startup as an organization and maybe we we we, we package you better to post profile you for those organizations and they'll come and ask government government yes we have rx radio we have these ones we have these ones and really this is uh, like we'll have these profiles there at Ministry of ICT and we'll have these profiles there when Ministry of ICT calls us, they find us organized. But they don't find us organized, we won't do anything. So we are limiting our potential as a sector. We are not making as much more we could and uh, we are not measuring our data because uh, we are not coming together as a whole. So I'm inviting everyone there that their light, their insights can light the path for tomorrow's the tech landscape. So let them come and throw all those things at me. Let them punch me. I'll take it in. We'll make notes. We'll write down and we'll come back to them with solutions. But we have a lot of free tools available. We have a lot of free data that's available they can consume. We have a lot of synergies that are free. Macquarie University and other researchers have a lot of information that businesses can as well take on. We can also pick businesses could say we are not interested and we want to also know that so that we can charge Macquarie University and change the years. The data you're giving, business leaders already know it. Ah, wow. Yeah. So we Macquarie University had a public I invited a very big dignitary from Europe who banks, Bank of World Bank and others sit to listen to business leaders didn't go. So there's a huge context we are missing and we want to know what are we missing. Tell us. We want to listen to you so that we know maybe we are outliers so that we come back and say, okay, how do we match the two? How do we ask, uh, adv- how do you advise us? Because people out there are very brilliant. They have a lot of ideas. They have a lot of projects they are doing. And we want to be able to profile them and show them to everyone out there so that they can either invest in them or so that they can maybe buy and purchase their products. I think wow. that's it, really. Well, I want to thank you so much. Gideon Kurununji, the CEO of ICT Association of Uganda. This has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for hosting us. <laughs> All right, back. best of luck and uh, hope to see you at uh, the fireside chat. Yeah, please, you're invited. Please, we need to be there with Eric Radio. For sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, do keep listening to your number one station. This is RX Radio.